the peaceful setting of the two lakes that are Avon Springs Fishery in Wiltshire belie what is actually going on beneath the surface because these clear waters hold some really nice trout. Primarily rainbow trout. It's a fly fishing water, fly fishing only there. And obviously in this sort of setting, it's an ideal place to go. The fish are fed by Barry Borden. He has his own stock ponds there, fed via the Hampshire Raven, the Upper Hampshire Raven, and that holds some enormous rainbows there that grow on well in the clear, crisp, clean waters. Now, for those who don't realize it, in Britain, you can't get big trout growing in our rivers and lakes without having being fed and grown on. There just isn't enough insect life. There's not enough fish, you know, uh, available to give them the protein to make them grow large. So we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish farms all over the country that supply both the table for food with supermarkets and the larger fish for sport fishing on day ticket fisheries, private fisheries, and many of our rivers, prime rivers, have to have stocked fish. Just so that clarifies it for people that think we have mountain glacial streams with huge salmon running up them, we don't. We have to grow our fish on, and you can see here, there's some really big fish ready to be put well, stocked into the lakes, basically. Now, years ago when I was younger, they used to use a lot of floating pellets in the fish farm industry in an effort to bring the trout and make them take stuff off the surface, insects like them, make, to get them used to rising to the surface. And that's what they used to do. Now, I believe the industry mostly as a whole use sinking pellets to enable the vast body of fish there to all grow at the same rate. They're then stocked into the lakes and it's up to the anglers to out with them and catch them. As you can see, Fly rods are ideal for this type of sport fishing. It's a, what we call put and take fishery. For those who don't know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, that the trout fishing English industry in, in Britain is mostly, largely put and take. That means they put the fish in and it's up to the anglers to take them out. Now those trout can live in there for months and months and months or even longer, especially with brown trout, which are notoriously difficult to get out of lakes. Once they've been pricked and lost by an ang angler, they, they're difficult to catch. But the rainbow, free swing rainbow, is more free biting, therefore they represent a much easier fish, a much, well, less of a challenge in a way than the brown trout fisher, which can be tough. Beautiful setting, a nice way of fishing, nothing better than taking a trout out on a fly rod. Well, after three hours without a touch or a knock, I'd thrown every fly in the box out there and I went to a grey zonker with a bit of lure flash, bang, two of these beauties in 10 minutes. And boy, did they fight. Uh, what we had was a fully floating line, about 12 foot of tapered leader. And uh, I was just letting the lure sink about a foot underwater, slow retrieve. Both fish followed it all the way, halfway to the bank. And then I coaxed them into snapping on it by giving it a quick, sharp tug. Same technique on both. Well, by this time I was doing all this filming of all the stew ponds, I thought it was about time Graham got the fly rod out and did some fishing himself, because all the other anglers were hooking up on trout. And it doesn't always seem that they're constantly on the feed all the time. What I did find were, look at all these eels. Barry told me, check out some of the eels I've got in this lake. Now, I've been traveling around this year and I've noticed a lot of eels in a lot of fresh water, but the clarity at Avon Springs is, well, you judge for yourself. Just put in the underwater camera there, it's pristine clear. This is the lake bed close in. It's got small marginal weeds growing up there. Well, it's part of the what we call the Hampshire Avon, which is a prime chalk stream river. The chalk stream means that any rain that falls goes down into the aquifers underground and is filtered up and it's cleaned by the chalk, so it comes up pretty clear. It's, it'd be unusual for them not to be clear. Even after heavy rain, they put a tinge of colour, but they wouldn't flood and go brown. So that's what, it, this is fed by what we call spring fed. It's a spring fed lakes here. And just look at these eels. If you have a look, I, got, I can't get right out in the middle of that. I can only get the ones in the margin, but it's a really nice eel swimming around. Now eels are 
indicative of good water conditions. And this is a quite a big eel digging and rooting in the bottom. That's not a small fish, is it? I mean, really, I should be putting the fly rod away and, and getting out a, a, a dead, small dead fish or a big bunch of worms. So I've never noticed those eels as prolific as they are in the water. Uh, 2016, when we did this film, summer 2016, there appears a lot of fisheries have got a lot of eels, and I believe that's because we've had so much rainfall, it's cleared all the waters, and a lot of lakes are in, well, good, tip-top condition. And look at the eel digging away there. One of the main features of coming down here, like Avon Springs, it is peace, tranquility, and you're in the countryside. So what have we got here people? An egg of some description, a wild bird egg. Does anybody out there know what it is? I personally don't. Has it been something that's been raided by a magpie? Or is it a natural hatch? A big egg. Any of you birders out there? Might be able to let, let us know what species you think that is. I'm gonna say a pigeon's egg. Yes, it wasn't long before Graham managed to hook up on the fly rod. He looks a happy bunny, doesn't he? Well, these are hard scrapping, these rainbows. There's no question that they really put a bend in the fly rod. You only need maybe a five to seven weight uh, fly rod, a floating line or an intermediate line, a leader of maybe 10 feet long, and then the fly of your choice. Um, they change all the time. It could be a light fly, a dark fly, a weighted fly, a dry fly. It's up, it's up to you as the angler to make that decision. A spanking Avon Springs. Rainbow trail. What a beauty on a beautiful English day. It starts with F. I'm not going to tell you the rest. <gasps> the last one started with F. Oh. The second one started with F as well. You son of a... Graham, take your own advice and check the hook point on the fly. No, it's sharp. See if we can get third time lucky for you. So what my theory is, is that it's a lot to do with speed. And if there's a lot of anglers about, even in the summer, that water's still a bit cold. I'm talking end of May, start of June. Now the air's warming up, but it takes longer for the water to warm up. So I think those trout are much more sparky than you'd imagine. You think they're all careful and just taking tiny little nymphs and flies. And yet if you accelerate a little bit faster, I'm, I feel sure that a lot of the time, doing something different to the fly, not just a change of fly, is really what turns those fish on. I'm pretty sure of that. But don't be afraid to speed it up a bit. You can bag it in pretty quickly. But pause and stop every now and then. And it just gives that trout a chance. He's chasing, chasing, chasing. It stops, he goes, oh, starts again. And then bam, he grabs it. And so not necessarily, I have got a gold head damsel on here. Not necessarily the actual pattern itself. Go through two or three patterns, two or three colors. And try that faster speed. Not all the time, just break it up. Well, at least I've got fish in, and I've got that first fish. It is, wait for this, five past one, 
that's when Graham Pullen starts fishing. So most of the other guys have been nailing the fish, but I've had to film so I couldn't uh, really get into the fishing, but now I'm into it. Now the other tip is, other than varying the speed, don't hammer one area all the time. Look around and find gaps where the other anglers have moved away from, because if they've been fishing a slow retriever all the time, you can go in there and one or two, three casts, that's all you need to spread through an area, one in the middle, one to the right, one to the left. You can often pick up what, a trout straight away. Now, later in the day as it warms up, and especially more so in the summer, the weed pops off the bottom, floats up to the top, forms a scum. That's going to drift across. So what you've got to do is, if you, if you don't want to get extremely frustrated and upset with it, and it is annoying because it stops your leader sinking, is to look for the gaps. When a little bit of breeze picks up, it might clear an area. That's the one you want to put that long cast in and fast retrieve. You can see here from the high angle with the camera how clear that water is when you look down on top of it. Underwater is clear as well. So when there's no wind rippling up the surface, it's a very good chance using polarizing glasses and a long peak cap that you can see trout cruising in the water and you can walk around and maybe get lucky and spot one of the larger fish, which you can then cast to. But you need to spot them. When it gets ripply, it's not the same. It breaks the surface up you get a different type of glare, and obviously you can't see the fish. You'll still catch fish, what we call fishing blind there, but if you want the larger fish, you can just pile away like I'm doing now, and you might get lucky, but generally what we call stalking, walking around different areas, uh, different swims, different parts of the lake, trying to find a spot where you can see a big one will obviously boost your average weight. For beginners, don't forget, point your rod straight down the line. There's a little bit jerking out of the water, you can see that. That's, that's the minimum that you want. You don't want a great big bow in the line there. And keep your other rod, your rod hand with the fingers there, ready to grip the line with your right hand as you're looking at it now. So you can tighten up on a fish as soon as you feel that pull. Work the fly line out slowly. Don't try and overcast. And then you can see. My right hand, which is holding the rod butt, I'm sliding the fly line through my fingers, but I can clamp my hand close quickly and lock up on a fish and hopefully set that hook. Well, that's what you call a pair of luck, guys. I was doing a slow motion casting, changed down to a small fly, and while I was pressing the button of the camera, I got a hook up. Now, I'm stripping this in, I'm not going to the reel, I'm keeping this one tight. It's on a small fly, like a, I think it's a mayfly merger, but the fish is going really well. Not a big trout, but it's a good, it's a good one. A good scrapper and probably a nice looker. Well, he's taking it all. Let's get some on the line. Wow, he really is going. If he pings off the language, three in a row you've seen on camera without the others I've lost, I'm trying to make this film for you. Come on, guys. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a gamble and get you a nice slow motion shot of him close up. If he comes off, he comes off. Well, its colours are fresh. That is something you come down here to Avon Springs to catch. A beautiful fish. Look at the tail on it. Absolutely fabulous. 
Well, guys, I'm coming out to the uh, dry fly nymph lake, and I just looked at one small inlet, and I can see a gargantuan pike. I mean, I'm supposed to be trout fishing. I've got a sidetrack with those eels down there. I put the wrong microphone cover on here, and I've just seen a pike that is well into double figures. I'll see if I can. I don't know it's not catchable even on a fly. I think it's right in the middle of the jungle. But I've got to show it to you. I'm going to try it with this camera first, and I'm going to try and lower the GoPro on it. Hopefully it doesn't spook. Just take it right round here and down there. Now I can see this with Polaroids. There's got to be a bit of a draw off here. There's going to be a little bit of suction coming to go through to the next lake. It's drawing the food through. And he's laying there, head facing that way. I don't know if you're going to see this. Obviously I can see it without Polaroids, but I doubt you're going to see it. You never know. It is there, trust me. Nothing. Obviously, Graham, how stupid is that? They are prescription ones. It's going to try the underwater camera because I'd just like to show you this big, big ass pike there. I can definitely see it. I'm going, to, I'm going to zoom in a tad more. Can you just look from there all the way up to here? I'm going to follow my there. Right, hopefully. Now I can see it. Obviously, you've got polarized. From there, it's a great big pike laying there. Hopefully you can just make it out. I'm going to film it anyway. Change settings. See if that makes any difference. And that's it. That's just there. It's that long shape there. Let's see if we can get the underwater one in. And at least if it does spook, you might see something. Unfortunately, as I was lowering that pole down, the pipe must have seen the movement and it rocketed off. Just look at the amount of bubbles that have come up from the bottom where it stirred up. Well... Anglers, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button on the underwater camera so I didn't get the shot I wanted. But you can see the massive amount of bubbles as I spooked it. It's barreled off there. It's somewhere between, I guess, 17 and maybe even 20 pounds. A big fish, but I'm supposed to be trout fishing. Well, guys, fish on. <laughs> it's not a trout. It is. Wait for this. Not what we saw earlier. It doesn't fall off. Oh, there we go, a pike. What I did see must have been, man, close to 16 to 20 pounds, that sort of bracket. Off we go again. Well, guys, it's gone quiet after that uh, pike when I had some lunch. Uh, had two or three follows in, and I started slowing up. I noticed that I was getting more follows when I went a little bit slower rather than fast. So you can see how you've got to chop and change and watch the reactions of the trout. Not to say I've got this one in yet, but there is indeed a trout on the end of the line. And the net's up there. Sad, really. Never learns. Ah. I've got the net. Absolutely great to see a fish. So, so clear the water is here. Absolutely, phenomenally clear. Now, something else I've been doing, instead of taking those folding little flip-up nets, where there's somewhere, let's say this average trout, two to five, six pounds, I just take a regular freshwater fishing one with a rigid pole. It does also extend. It's got quite a shallowish, which we call it a pan shape there, but that enables me to quickly reach right out and net a trout, rather than the short flip-up net, which is, let's say, from there to here, and that means you have to net the close trout closer to you, which means you've got to bend your rod farther back to pull it into the net, which means, yes, a greater chance of breaking your rod. So that's what I've been doing, and I guess it's made of aluminium or something. It's nice and lightweight, it's easy to find. That's what I'm using at the moment. Having one last walk around, looking for a, tr a trout to close out with, I wanted a close-up shot, slow motion action shot. They've got locked jaw, what should I see as I'm walking around? Yeah, a pike. I've got him hooked up. I tricked it in front of his nose and he's absolutely snapped it down. 
I have to play him really lightly because this time 100% I know that hook is inside his jaws. <laughs> He's not a big one because he might be six pounds or so. But I'm really going to have to play him light. And he's buried in the weed. Oh, here he is. Kick. Oh, man. And I've gone to stealth mode on the reel. I've taken the clicker off. I'll try and put it on for all you people who love or hate clickers. It's dangerous, this is. He's ripping the bubbles to pieces, the bottom over there. I'll tell you, I'll lose this one. Let me just show you. I'm going to pop in there. Let that focus pull up. Focus pulls in. Look at the bubbles there. That's where he is churning around on the bottom. You can see the fly line there. He's down in there, burying and burying and burying. And I'd say the way all those bubbles are ripped up, that I'm probably definitely going to lose this one. I'll do my best anyway. The problem is they go in the weed and they've got something tight to pull against. And he has... Can I get him to kick out? It's a risk. Oh, I might have got him out, I might have lost him. Say I'd lost him. Ah, oh, there you go, I lost him in the weed. About six pounds, it was really something to see him snap on that fly though. Guys, I think I've got the big pike on. I was casting what I thought was a double figure trail. I doubt I'll get it, I doubt I'll get it. He's going to bite through the leader or something. Take me in the weed, he's going in the weed. Wow, he's double figured. Don't know how long this is going to last. Not very long, I fear. Not very long. Not very long. Do the best I can with it. I don't even know if I've got to get near the nesting stage. I think he was going to go off again. Man, looks like he's hanging there. There he is. Thank you. I can't believe I've had it on this long. It's sure to ping off. Right on the other side of the lake now. takes me through some weed, I'm stuffed. What am I going to do with this? Oh, he's got a big ball of weed on him. Oh no. I fear the worst. Are you going to go take off again? I'm going to have to go for it. Holy shit, I didn't... <laughs> Broke the net. Big double, might even go 20 pounds. I'm going to have to... I have to try and hand this fish out. It's got a big ball of weed on it. He must be wearing through that line. Oh man, I feel a, I feel a wetty coming. I feel a wetty. There he is. Stuffed on weed now. I've got a ton of weed on there. It's going to come up against the hook and it's going to come off. Oh, he's cleared. Let's show to the GoPro one of these cameras. Please gotta come out. Brilliant. What a jumbo. Guys, my biggest pike on a fly. I think he just snapped at it. 
and he nicked on the outside here. If he'd gone in there, let me show you. If he'd gone in those jaws, it's good night Vienna. What do you think, guys? 18, 18, approaching 20 pounds, I'd say. Absolute beauty. Let's get him back. I need to get some of this fish. It's a beauty. They're still quivering. And he nicked me there as well. Only with a bit of uh, gill raker. That's the fly I had it on, changed it like a gold head damsel. See loads and loads of flash in it. And that's obviously what you saw in the clear water. But I saw the shape and it was out from the bay where I, I pointed them out to you early on. It was out from the bay, I thought, man, is that going slow? That's a big, big arsed, well, big arsed, a very big trout, a very large fish. Just kept casting and twitching away. Man alive. Just felt a drag, lift up, hooked up, what a scrap. No landing net, broke my landing net. Wouldn't have gone in anyway. Oh, some fish I'm telling you. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Looks like trout for tea for me. And what an epic battle with a pike. Keep watching, keep subscribing, and don't forget the Totally Awesome Outdoors channel as well. It's all great fun, and it's all free.